What what held you back, man? What held you back? I'd say the um, overall flavour of the wine. <laughs> 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 Hey guys, uh, welcome back. We're now on week three of Shit Wine Tastings, my evolution from knowing nothing to knowing a little bit more than nothing. Uh, more shit opinions, more great wines. Let's see how we go. So wine number one this week. Um, smells white. That is absolutely gorgeous. This has been fermented in barrel, and it smells really, really tasty. That's interesting. Um, Chardonnay yeah. on the nose, Chen and Blanc on the palate. It's just so well balanced. It's just so well put together. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna be shoving a, a generous 60 bucks, a bottle Aussie, uh, and six bottles. For me, it's a one bottle purchase. So you have it with dinner, that's it. You walk away and you're not unhappy with it, but it's not something I need to have at home for special occasions. So I'm gonna have one bottle. Fantastic. Uh, I reckon this is actually probably really good value. I reckon, I reckon this might be about 40, 40 bucks, maybe a little bit cheaper. Uh, and I'll be grabbing a case of this. Absolutely no worries. 35 bones! Yeah, uh, I'm gonna up my uh, thing to 12 bottles. I'm, I'm big into this. 35 bucks from a bottle shop, pretty reasonable. Again, you're probably gonna be paying 50 to 60 bucks a bottle in a restaurant. 35? Fuck yeah. Yeah, cool, grab a case. Grab an absolute case of that, that's so good. All right, numero due. Uh, again, we're in, uh, now in red wine territory. Probably get your hair out. That's pretty tasty. Oh yeah, how's the tannin? It doesn't do heat. I, I need more fruit in my wine. It's got me thinking, you know, Loire red wine straight off the bat. Um, and for that reason, again, I'm gonna chuck another 60 bucks and six bottles on this one. So I think that this is probably like a $45 bottle of wine. I will have a glass of it. So I'd go between three to six bottles maybe. I'd probably stick at three. Because again, it's not something that I truly love, but it's something I appreciate. 39, I'm on fucking fire this week. 39? Cool, so I'm overvaluing this, but. 39, all right, I scrubbed that. I'm gonna jump that up to another 12 bottles. Uh, what have we got here? We got another red. Okay, this is instantly smelling more like my sort of drink. It looks like Pinot, but that's just like, you know, it's not filtered light red. That's generally where you end up going. Very uh, lifted palette. Um, almost white wine levels of acidity here. I'd like to drink this while looking at a sunset. Not sure why. So savory, so well orchestrated. Definitely from a hands-off producer because it is unfiltered. But this is top tier shit. It's gonna be 50 bucks a bottle, I reckon. I'd have a dozen of this. I'd have two dozen of this. I'd have as much as you could possibly give me. I'm probably gonna be sitting at like 35 bucks. Um, and would probably commit to three bottles uh, of this. 35! Bargain! Absolute bargain! Give me as much as you can fucking give me. This is $35. $35, bang on, 35 bucks. Again, great value, guys. Um, fun little wine. I'd be jumping at the chance to be able to get a couple of bottles and try them out. Okay, so we're jumping to a white wine for number four. Uh, it's showcasing again, this sort of, you know, pretty deep golden hue. Definitely, this is some funky shit because not only is it skin contact, it is definitely unfiltered because there's plenty of sediment in there. It looks like, it literally looks like it's got little bits of lemon zest in there or something. I don't know, we'll find out. There's a residual sweetness to this. You can't really pick it up. I think if you were just drinking it on a daily basis, you wouldn't really pick up, uh, you know, it's not a sweet wine, but there's definitely a, a, a bulbous, almost globular nature to the fruit that isn't weighing it down because this has a striking acidity. 
This is great. I, I'd take about six, six bottles of that pretty happily and I'd be really stoked if I could pay about $35 for that. 29, yeah, right. Well, 29, I'll tell you what, I'll bump that up to four bottles. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced, um, but at 29 bucks, really good value. Three bottles of $29 a bottle. Um, you're not gonna be upset. No one's gonna have a bad time. Especially people from London who've got like that gap in their teeth. Just, the the center will go straight through. That's not gonna be a problem for you at all. Okay, so we're going back to big, big, deeper. <clears throat> Oh yeah, we've got chocolate and blueberries. Uh, you know, real blue fruited, fun little thing. Oh, this is probably this smells like Shiraz. This is Syrah, but probably a, like some really good, cool climate region. Does heaps in your mouth, it's taking you in one direction and the other. Um, but I'm a simple man. I like simple pleasures. And for me, this ain't it, chief. This just ain't it. Um, like I would happily part with. 65 bucks uh, a bottle for this and for that I would actually jump at the chance to grab 12 bottles uh, I'd pay 50 bucks for this um, But I hope it's less. Yeah, look makes more sense <laughs> <laughs> 32 bucks um, This is $32 Oh shit! We're getting good deals today We're getting really really good deals these are these are all like I'm I'm prepared to spend so much more money than these things are actually people are charging for these. So winemakers, ask a little bit more for your wine. All right, we have got five wines uh, here. One, three, four, five. Really interesting lineup. Amazing lineup. Uh, I, I enjoyed all of these. Very different to the ones that we've had in the past. Very different. Yeah, we've had this. This was one of the most variable ones. But I actually found there was a lot of winners here. There's a lot of winners. There was a lot of like moderates, but I don't think. Well, I don't think there was any inherent losers here. I don't think there was any ones yeah. that, that were, stood out as like, nah, I probably wouldn't. And it was very, very close. Uh, so wine number three has scored the highest amongst all three of us. Yep. Um, I, put was that, it? I put that one as number one for that one, yeah. Number, number one. one, wine number three. Hey, wow. very cool. So wine number three here is Adelaide Hills. Um, it's a blend of Pinot Noir and Merlot from Leco. So these are the Kerner boys. Yeah, these are actually fantastic, uh, fantastic wines, uh, especially at this level, this range. Yeah, well done. Um, very cool artisan wine making uh, at its peak, at its best, um, and absolutely smash. <laughs> uh, then we followed very closely with wine number one yeah. oh, really? uh, in oh, wow. second place. Very, very close. Uh, it was. How are we looking? This was the twelve bottles, twelve bottles, one bottle. Oh, into this, into this. Loud places. Um, this is worlds apart wines. Uh, Adelaide Hill Chardonnay. You know, you say yeah, classic Chardonnay. Delicious. And this is, is this? Uh, this is Louis Schofield, uh, co-owner of Hellbound, uh, blind maker of Coda Barrels. Just a bit of an all-round Adelaide legend making some pretty dope wine at the minute. Wine number five, my little thing that I cheekily said was Cabernet, but uh, now upon smelling it, <laughs> I reckon I was right with Grenache. So before, Embarrassingly we enough. before we reveal this, I said uh, Spenjoski Grenache Barossa Valley 2019. Oh, shit. Oh, it does look wine? like your dad's wine. It does look like dad's wine. What the heck? Graciano! I was right, it's your dad's wow. wine. Wow. That's uh okay. I don't know this producer. What the fuck is this? This is cool, man. Oh, this is awesome. Almond cart. Almond cart wines. Uh, I I am completely unaware of this producer. It's not one that I've encountered before. El Dos 2019 Graciano <laughs> with number four. Number four is number four. Skinsy something or other. Skinsy something or other with a bit of tartrate dropout. Uh, oh, Hills collide. Hell yeah, skinny. Hills Collide Skinny, uh, Videlo. That is the tastiest Videlo that I've had uh, in a long time from Australia. That's really that cool. That is bitsy. Look that is it. bitsy. That there is, is, there is so good. That's really cool. Yeah, good idea. That's on you actually boys. really, really cool. Uh, um, wine number two. What, what do we got? What was this, Lockie? Oh, this is the cool little old worldy thing. Pierre Beast. Yeah. Uh, Chateau Pierre Beast, which was a Cabernet Franc. This is not 
Loire Valley a little white wine. Good really right. cool, huh? I guess I'm right. <laughs> I know, you got something right. For those, oh, for, for those who don't know, uh, Loire Valley is, is a mine. Uh, and so what I've gone uh, in terms of guessing wine, so I, I just choose everything as Loire Valley now. And hey guys, thanks so much for joining us for another week of blind wine reviews. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, you've enjoyed uh, Henry's love affection for anything that is not your dad's wine. Uh, and Noah's uh, love for everything that is. Uh, anyway. <laughs> All right, guys. No one loves your dad's wine. <laughs> Catch so you I love week. your dad. Swine. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out.